this is Nomad and I just wanted to see if my hands look all right and if the audio works in my face <laughs> that's showing the screen currently so let's see how bouncy this phone is okay <laughs> anyway here we go we're just gonna we're just gonna play around with this and see what what we get let's see here Turn down this resolution. Hey, what's up, Josh? How you doing, man? Hey, can you tell me how how this is working? Like, does it look okay? My back doesn't feel the best in this position, but we'll see how long we can last. Okay, notice this is not ZBrush. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just gonna. I'm wanting to know if the audio sounds good. The videos, because I don't have, I can't, I don't have my other headphones on, so I can't uh, listen to my own voice and make it make sure it sounds good. But the reason I wanted to do like the camera shining down at my iPad is so you can see my hands, and because um, you navigate with your hands instead of a keyboard, so basically a single finger will rock it around like this and um, two fingers will zoom and pan like this and then three fingers will move the lights around well let's do it again there we go it'll move the lights around like this so pretty crazy but welcome you guys hope you're all doing okay um i was gonna attempt to to sculpt out a frog just for fun um because one of my original tutorials way back in the day, if any of you remember back on Gumroad, I did a, I made a frog. And um, yeah, I kind of have it sitting off. I have a concept sitting off on my other screen. I could load it in here so you guys can see it. But for now, I think I'm just going to look at it over there. Um, okay, so let's get going. I really, really love this. Have any of you messed around with Nomad? Do you even know what it is? What what it is you're looking at here? <laughs> so it's kind of a it's kind of like Procreate in a way. Um and you have like the um the radius over here and the and the power over here. You've never seen it? Okay. So this is an app and I recommend uh, get using it. It's a mobile only sculpting app and I recommend using it on an iPad. You can use it on an Android, but um, the reason I don't suggest using it on an Android is because you don't get to use the, um, the Apple Pencil. Now I have, a, I have a cover on my Apple Pencil, it makes it look like one of those HB pencils, but um, it has a just a really nice uh, feel to it, really nice depth and um, it has this little button it's not really a button it's just a, a a surface that you can touch twice and if you see my brush actually change when I tap twice it's just changing it from add to subtract it's pretty nice um, and then you you can see all the brushes off here on the on the right hand side what's cool about it is you can actually flip it so if you're left-handed you can use it left-handed I was just talking to one of my students this morning and he was just telling me how he just couldn't get into Nomad and he's left-handed. And I'm like, well, you can come up into these settings up here, go to um, interface and you can mirror all the bars so you can flip everything to the other side. So <laughs> Max, yeah, 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 really? <laughs> so Max is a big, a big Nomad user. Um, so you can flip things, you can move stuff around. Um, Let's see, I don't want to get into it too much. I'm just going to start to sculpt here. One of my favorite tools inside of Nomad is this thing called Tube. It's this tube brush, and you can either pick a curve or a path over here on the left-hand side. Um, yeah, you know, I thought about that. I thought about, hey, you know, it's, it's going to be a fun toy to travel with, maybe to um, start a sculpt in here and then bring it over into ZBrush after, I'm, after I get home and I want to load it up, right? Um, but it turns out I can take it further in here than I thought I could. Some of the, 
some of the things I've taken all the way to the end, in fact. But, um, oh, one thing I wanted to tell you that I just kind of figured out too, I don't know if you know this or not, Max, but if in ZBrush I'm used to tapping on the surface to reset my camera orbit, but inside of Nomad, it's actually um, in between two of your fingers. If you put two fingers down, you can see see the little pink dot that's appearing between my two fingers on the sphere and over here. That is the center of the camera orbit. So if I orbit now, you can see it's orbiting around that pink dot. So if I go over here, you can see it's orbiting. It snaps to the surface when I put my two fingers on either side of the sphere and um, and then you have this little thing up here I can tap on that and it takes me to the front if I tap on it again well might have to do it with my finger it's not working usually when you tap on it again it goes to the back it flips around but um, the developer is messing with it currently so okay tube brush oh maybe that's why it's not flipping is because I have the tube brush okay um, but it has this really, really cool path system, and you, you, it's kind of like NURBS. You can start to draw these curves, and if you draw them, if you start it on the surface, it will snap to that surface, um, but if you draw it off out here in the world, it will just snap to the world center, whichever direction you're looking, and then I can push on this green dot, see this big green dot when I'm done, and it'll make a tube like this, and then you can see this orange dot right here that will uh, change the circumference of this tube. And it has a, a whole bunch of parameters you can mess with. You can see across the top, I can turn snapping on and off. Um, I can make the, the whole ring closed, like if I wanna make a loop. But one, one thing I really like is this, this radius right here. So I'm gonna add another dot. You can actually bend it around, do whatever you want with it. And um, so if I, if I click this radius again, now it adds uh, another orange dot at the other end, and I can make one end big or small, which is really nice. And then if I go one more level down, it will give me a, a, a dot on every single... Uh, in, it's funny, in a long time ago, I used to use NURBS, and these dots are called knots. <laughs> and so I'm, used, I'm still used to calling them knots. And now I have a, a dot on every knot. <laughs> That's kind of hard to say. But there's also some parameters up here on the left hand side. And uh, hey, what's up, Rob? And if you click here, there's some there's some more, like there's parameters, post subdivision perimeter. So Nomad does have subdivisions and I can crank those up and down if I want to. But this is just what it's gonna, what it's gonna do after I validate it. It's gonna subdivide it. So, Josh, I can. Um, maybe I maybe I should. I think I I don't know if I saved this or not, but I'll I'll load it up and show you. Yeah, I want you guys to ask questions. So um, this is just a test. I want to do kind of an intro to Nomad. Um, <laughs> this phone is like right in my face. Hi guys. <laughs> I have this arm that's like shooting down, so you can see my hands, but it just puts it right at my eye level. Okay, so. Now that I have this tube, I don't have to validate it. I can just leave it alone. I can just leave it right there. And I, I was making kind of a stick that the, the frog is gonna be holding on to. So I was just gonna kind of put that out there like this and then just kind of leave it. Now to select stuff, you just tap on it with your finger and that's, what, that's how you select it. See, And it gives you this little kind of a, a pulse saying that, um, that you know which one is is being selected. Are they real subdivisions? They are. It's not a, it's not a dynamic subdivision. It's actually a real subdivision. And it will give you, just like ZBrush, it'll give you a warning if you're going to do something that's going to kill the subdivisions. So um, that's really nice. But if I go to, you can see across the top, it looks like a little image right here. Um, I can, I can have a color or I can have just the actual environment of the HDR image. Um, or I can pull up a reference image. This is a, an image that I had loaded up earlier. I have a bunch in here. I can import it. Um, let's see. Files, photos. Let's see if I have one. I'll just show you this Luigi girl. This isn't the one I'm going to do, but I'll just show you how to add that as a reference in the back. So 
I put this in the back and then you can see this button says transform right here. Um, it's kind of hard to see. I need to, I need to <laughs> Rob, I need to set up my, um, my stream deck buttons to switch between scenes so I can show you. But if I hit transform, now I can move this around. You can just like in Procreate, if you've ever used Procreate, you can kind of uh, rotate and scale and put it wherever you want. So I usually kind of park it up here. And then you can go back to that image and you can change like the opacity of it. You can change the overlay so you can kind of put it in front of your objects or behind it. Um, and then you can adjust the position like with uh, sliders down here on the bottom left. Yeah, it's really easy. It's not like, <laughs> I, I don't mean to, so this is the thing. This is the thing that's going to be really, really hard for me is saying it's not like ZBrush. It, you do it like this, right? <laughs> and no, nothing against ZBrush. ZBrush is my first love, but just, just a simple way of adding an image is just nice. Just to go, um, you know, <laughs> image, add, move it around and you're done. And there it is. <laughs> Right, so let me save this image and I'll show you. Save as. Let me save this one in my iCloud. iCloud. Images. Or maybe just photos. I'm still getting used to the way uh, Mac likes to save, save things. Okay, I'll just do that and we'll see how that goes. See if I can find it now. Um, this is done, uh, this concept that I'm going to pull up is, oh, is this the whole thing? Cause I'm saving it from, hold on a second. Eh, that's not going to work. <laughs> I'm trying to save it from Instagram and you guys know how Instagram is. It doesn't let you save images. <laughs> so anyway, I'm just going to turn this off for now. But what's one really cool thing is Nomad will, it, it's like a, it's like Marmoset or Eevee inside of Blender. It's a, um, it's a real-time renderer. Hey, what's up, NLT? I like to use Nomad while relaxing on the couch, exactly. Or at the zoo, or on top of a mountain, or <laughs> wherever you just happen to be. Um, but what's cool is this is a PBR rendering engine, and you can render with it while you're sculpting, which just blows my mind. So if you go into this post-processing, so it not only has PBR, but it has post-processing, right? So I can turn that on and um, it, it has global illumination even, it has some reflection stuff. Global illumination, you can see it reflecting down in here. Um, I don't really like to turn that on too much because it taxes the system. I do like to have ambient occlusion on and you can turn the strength of that up and down. And this is screen, screen space ambient occlusion so it's light on the system, but it's not as nice as like a ray traced ambient occlusion. Um, you can do depth of field. Bloom is really fun. Um, curvature is like, it'll put a really fine line around all your stuff, which if um, I have a different character that I've been playing with and it's really fun to see like the little outlines all around your objects. But this is what I was interested in this vignette and I can like change the I, I kind of wish I could change the color of it, but it's it's just black and I can change like the, the fall off of it. Anyway, it just kind of gives me a nice creative environment. I also, um, you can also make these images um, be your background. So if I load up a background image like this and then I hit transform like this, then I can just bring this up like this. And now it's like I have a canvas, right? And then I could tap on the surface and now I have a, a, a kind of a fun painted background. I did another one that was like, uh, like splatters. I just did this in Procreate. I just made this background in Procreate. So see, it's like this really fun background that kind of sets your mood, sets the tone, um, gets you in the creative mood. Um, here's another one I did for this dinosaur. I just had, you can do drawings. You can make it look like, uh, like a sketchboard, you know, like, um, like recycled paper or something like that. Just really, really fun stuff. Um, I used to do that in Sculptress, not Sculptress Pro in ZBrush, but in Sculptress a long time ago, I had a background that looked a lot like this one, but, um, 
So I was thinking about doing these different subtle backgrounds just to have back there. And I can also, you know, I, I you can't load in more than one image at a time. I kind of wish you could because then I could park my reference image on top of this nice canvas, but I can do that inside of Procreate, no, not a big deal. Like I made this, this weasel, um, let's see, where is that? And I just put that on the back. See this, this little guy? I just put him on, this, on the back of the same background, but it does kind of clutter up your image library. So, okay, anyway, that's, it's really fun to mess around with the background. And if you rotate, uh, your model doesn't clip through the background. I kind of wish it had a shadow catcher. It doesn't have one yet. He's thinking about putting one in here, but so far it doesn't have one. But you can put lights in here. You can put a background in here, like a, like a sloping background, you know, like the in infinity backgrounds, whatever they're called for uh, product shots. And so if I put a light in here, see it says add lights. Um, well, let me talk about this environment first. So you can um, change your um, HDR images and it will change the look of your model just by changing these. Just like, you know, what, like you expect in any kind of a HDR environment. I kind of like this one. Um, and you can, you can just see what different uh, textures and things look like in the environment. And it also gives you a whole bunch of um, different materials. Like, I don't, I don't know how much I want to cover right now. It's just so, it's so in depth that uh, I just kind of want to get to modeling. <laughs> so let's let's model this guy and then we'll um, we'll, we'll see what happens. So with this with this head, let's see what I can do here. Okay, I'm gonna grab this move brush. With this move brush, um, I I tend to turn the intensity of it down. It feels a little too fast for me right out of the box. So um, and then another thing is the. Uh, the iPad has, or the, the, the most recent iPad, the M2 version, has hover. That's one thing I miss with mine, is I can get my pen close and it doesn't hover. So I have to tap in order to move the brush. So I'm not gonna see where that brush is going to, to work. Um, so I just kinda have to hope it works, it works well <laughs> and it does what I want it to do, which it doesn't bug me too much. Um, but yeah, I just get a really big brush. It also has matte caps too, like um, like ZBrush does. Like it's underneath here. I can change this to matte cap like this, and it has some really has a bunch of them that you can pick from. So if you want to um, not pay attention to your environment at all, um, you can you can just ignore that and just use matte caps. So these won't work with PBR, but uh, I like to work on PBR. So let's have this. And then I bought this, I'm not a huge glove guy, right? I don't really, I'm, I don't really like these things because they kind of cut off my circulation sometimes and they make, make my fingers cold. Ashley was talking about this too. They do the same thing to her hand. But the reason I, I felt like I had to get one with an iPad is because this is a touch screen. And this has a thicker uh, piece of fabric right here that is a palm rejection. So it doesn't think that my palm is a finger. So I can, I, I have all my brushes off on the right hand side right here and I don't want to be hitting them. So that's why I got this glove. So it wouldn't accidentally hit all those brushes. <laughs> so that's kind of a complication that I wasn't expecting. Um, but yeah, this glove's good. It's fine. I think it helps that I got one that fits my hand. <laughs> that's the size of the hand that I have. So, okay. Let me get a little smaller and start to make these. I'm just going to make this really simple frog. I'm just going to push in. But it has really wide eyes. So I'm going to pull it out really far. And then what it, what it has too is it has masking. Help keeps the screen. Yeah, it does help keep the screen screen clean. I also have this. Um, the reason it's not glaring very much is I have this uh, cover called Paper Like, and the Paper Like, um, the Paper Like works really really well. Oh, heavier. Yeah. So you can go to this um, these settings right here. What he's talking about. 
or maybe it's here. No, it's gesture. Okay, so if you go to the settings, you go under gesture, um, see where it says finger and stylus. You can say, make your camera work with your finger, your sculpt with your stylus, your gizmo with your stylus. But none of these say whether you use your stylus to pick a brush or not, you know? So yeah, that's, that's why, um, that's why you have to have kind of a palm. Re there is a palm rejection built in, but it's in beta. And I find that it doesn't work as well as a glove does. So yeah, I just use the glove. It's fine. It works. Okay. So I kind of have his face here. What I was going to say is, uh, it works with masking. Now, one really interesting thing about Nomad is the voxel remeshing that's like Dynamesh inside of uh, ZBrush. So if I turn on wireframe, you can see the density and this is actually being subdivided. And the subdivisions, um, if I go, if I wanna cut something, just like in ZBrush, I have to uh, Dynamesh it or get rid of the subdivision level somehow. So if I click and hold this voxel remesh button, this is like Dynamesh on steroids. Um, if I if I go crank it like this, you can see the uh, the resolution change. I kind of look at it like pixel density. Um, it works really really well, and I can adjust the density. I, I tend to make it quite high, but it has this. And this that's just the preview of it, by the way. Um, but it ha it does have this little checkbox that says. Um, keep sharp edges and that keep sharp edges works really, really well. But I mean, this guy doesn't have any sharp edges, so I don't have to keep them. I'm just going to hit remesh and see it. It's going to say multi-resolution is lost to say, okay, that's okay. And then, um, now I, now it, it does, uh, this kind of a remeshing like uh, blender does in a way. Um, but now I can use masking because I have more density because I want to make a mouth on this guy and just kind of curl it. And what's cool is it has this mask, this select mask controller. And you know, the curve that I used for that tube brush that I was showing you guys earlier, it uses the same kind of a spline curve with this, uh, with any, with masking, with other different things. So I can make like a, actually I'm going to move this down here because I want to mask off. He's kind of, he kind of has a frowny face. So, whoops. If you make uh, an extra dot, you can just drag the two together till they're red and let go and it will combine them together. But um, yeah, this is really nice and it's screen space so I can move my object behind it, line it up the way I want it to be lined up. And then I hit this green dot. It's kind of hidden way down here on the left. And then it just masks everything really nice. Um, and then underneath the mask controls, it has blur, sharpen. So I can blur it a little bit, sharpen it. Okay, so I can grab my move again. Make it big. Go from the top and just kind of... I want to drag the lip out. So I'm going to invert the mask and then pull it out like this. Oh, come on, move. There we go. So, let me see. I don't want it to be like that. I kind of want it to go up. And it, I, I think it feels, it feels pretty good, like to sculpt in here. A lot of people ask like how, if does it feel good, you know? or correct, and it does. It's pretty good. And how's the broadcast, you guys? Is the volume and audio still okay? Um, and to, to uh, clear the mask, it's just like ZBrush. You hold down mask over here and you just swipe on the background, and then it clears it out. You can see it kind of makes this um, stretch geometry. And um, again, I can, let, let me turn on wire mesh so you can see what's going on. Okay, so it basically stretches it just like ZBrush would. And now I can just hit voxel remesh again, and it's gonna remesh that just like Dynamesh does. And it, this does have like a Sculptress Pro kind of a thing. It's called Dino Topo. 
So I could turn on dy dynamic topology um, and set what kind of dynamic topology method it has, the kind of detail I can flood fill it with a remesh with uh, dynamic topology. Um, and it, it works really well. So let's see. But for now, I'm just going to just kind of smooth this out a little bit. What's interesting about Nomad is the, the intensity slider over here. I can crank it past 100%. Like you can see, so you know how in ZBrush you get like that uh, smooth, like the the really, what is it called? Smooth Stronger? You know how you get, have that Smooth Stronger brush? In here, I just have to crank it higher beyond 100% and it works pretty well. But we'll, we'll see how this goes. So I'm just gonna smooth this down. Let's turn off wireframe so you can see it. And then it has this really nice pinch brush that is more subtle. It's very subtle. So I can just come through here and pinch it. And it, it doesn't, it doesn't affect the neighbors, the neighboring geometry as much as the uh, ZBrush one does. So yeah, something like that. And then I can just grab this pinch brush and just kind of smooth this out where I pulled it just to flatten it a little bit. Okay, and then if I want to um, insert, this is what you're probably all waiting for to see like what, what do you do when you want to put an eyeball in there. Um, basically, there's two ways. You can either go to this list. This is your uh, hierarchy list. It's kind of an outliner like in uh, Maya. And I can just hit add right here. And then you can see all the different shapes. There's like a sphere and a cylinder. Um, but what this does is this will put a new shape right at zero zero in the world zero zero. So if I want to add um, shapes to the outside, there's this insert mesh brush right here, top left that I have. I've moved it. So another thing you can see, this is a list of two brushes. I wanted to show all my brushes here. Um, by default, it's just one strip that you have to slide up and down. And if you tap on here, sometimes it makes like a big box with all the brushes listed in there. But if you go in here, in this uh, interface, you can set the, the toolbox max column toolbox, if you can see it right here, to, to two. So um, that way it will just show these two, two rows of, of brushes here, which that's the way I like it. So. Um, now I can just, on the left hand side, you can see there's all these different shapes. I'm just going to pick a sphere and then you just click and drag, stick it in there like that. Just one, one sphere. Hey, what's up, Uncle Jesse? How you doing, man? <laughs> Good to see you. Um, so, uh, <laughs> dude, I saw your, uh, your, your giant magneto. That thing is nutty. <laughs> I can't wait to see it done. Um, so if you want to mirror this, uh, you just hit mirror on the top and you can see both of these and then you you can see that you have some options over on the right hand side and there's this gizmo and you can just turn gizmo on and it will give you the gizmo right at the the insert point where you put it and you just kind of push it in and there you go so yeah I'm gonna do some cool things with this eyeball with the uh, with the materials it's <laughs> the materials in here it's just wild. <laughs> yeah, do it. Do it right now. Yeah, two rows. Because then you can see all the brushes, right? It's like, I don't know why that's not just there for uh, by default. It should be. <laughs> so you can see I still have this menu at the top right here. And it says, um, so there's Gizmo, Mirror, and Validate. Well, if I, I don't have to validate it, but what it's saying is, um, it's kind of hard to see, but the, the, uh, the, the menu up here, you can see that open circle. If you click on that, there's some adjustments you can make, like maximum faces and uh, post subdivisions. So you can turn this way down and you can say how many subdivisions you're going to um, put on there before you hit validate. Okay, so I, I want it to be something like that. I'll just hit validate. And now what it does, this is this is a little different than uh, ZBrush. I keep mentioning ZBrush because most of the people watching come from the ZBrush world. And I want to say this is how it's like this, this other program. Um, so if you go in the outliner, you can actually see there's a red kind of a, it says mirror. 
in red right there. And what that is, it's a repeater. It's called a repeater. And there's several repeaters in here. Um, mirror is one of them. It has radial symmetry, which is another one. Um, it has, uh, well, let's just look. It has curve repeater, radial repeater, and an array. So all of those things are repeaters. And what's crazy about that is you can stack them. So you can repeat a repeat, <laughs> like peat and repeat. So you can like um, nest repeaters inside each other and you can get, and they're instances. So that's the difference is it's an instance. So it's not a copy. So uh, an instance is just, um, it's what, it, how, how can I explain it? An instance. It's, it's like a, it's like a ghost of the real thing, right? So you can edit the real thing and the opposite side is a ghost. So let me show you a good example of that. So with the trim brush, which is kind of like the knife brush, um, let me turn off, off perspective. Um, if you're gonna use a trim brush, you can use this line over here. And in ZBrush, if you're gonna cut this with a line and you draw this angle like this, usually, um, usually when you go like this, it's gonna delete the one on the left, right? Because it's being the way uh, ZBrush mirrors things. But in here, it's an instance. So it cuts both of them how you would expect them to be cut because you know, the, usually you're, you're working on one side or the other. So you can select one side or the other, whichever one you wanna work on. But one is the real one and one is the mirror. <laughs> so if I pin this, you'll see if I click the one on the left-hand side, the little uh, checkbox goes away. And so you can tell which one is the real one. And you want to be working with the real one because the other one will, it, it won't behave the same. Like when you're moving it around and stuff, it just won't behave the same. So um, just make sure, like I was watching one of, the, one of Dave Reed's videos the other day and he was having some trouble um, moving one side around. He, he didn't understand why and that's why. So, um, and I got a shout out to Dave Reed. Dave Reed is an amazing uh, tutorial guy and uh, that's, his videos are where I learn most of this. So if you wanna learn Mo Nomad some more, either yeah, like and subscribe here for more Nomad videos or go check out Dave Reed as well. Very, very cool stuff. So shout out to Dave. Okay, so I'm gonna show you some stuff that's gonna possibly blow your mind here. So we have this eyeball. I'm gonna pin this for a second. And I'm gonna duplicate this sphere. So now I have two. And I'm gonna name this second one uh, cornea. Cornea. Okay. And I'm gonna hide it. Hey, what's up Dalton, how you doing? How many people are watching right now, by the way? It doesn't tell me. I should pop, pop up YouTube and, and look. But then I'll, then I'll get, uh, <laughs> I'll be like, oh, I don't wanna, I don't wanna see. 27, okay, that's good, that's good. That's a good amount, all right. So, um, so I, hid, I hid the one that I just made. And so that's gonna be, um, that's gonna be our glass, like the glass over the eye. Hey JJ, welcome. Um, and this is gonna be the, the inside, okay? So frog's eyes, they have kind of this, I'm gonna make them yellow and have kind of this uh, weird pupil shape. So I'm gonna hold down voxel, crank up the density on it and hit remesh. And it's gonna remesh it and then I'm gonna hold down. Uh, and this smooth over here is a toggle. So I can turn that on and off with my finger or I can click and hold it and smooth with it and then just let go and then it will turn off. But I can also toggle it. So make sure that this is working. It doesn't look like it's working very well. I'm gonna solo this and make sure I'm on the right thing. Okay, so I am smoothing the cornea, not the sphere. There we go. Let me, let me re remesh this one as well. Okay, now, the, how dense you can remesh something depends on how, how big your iPad is or how, how much RAM it has, basically. Okay, so, and how you can tell is if you can look up here on the, on the top left-hand side, 
you can see it says used and free um, and how many vertices you have in your scene currently. And that will, that will affect or that will tell, uh, that will affect how much density you can do. And this also has decimation in here. So if you get too heavy, you can always decimate stuff. Um, let's see. Cornea is hidden. All right. I just want to make sure that I'm not, that I'm working on the thing I want to work on. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a, a like a carve crease brush, turn this down and just kind of cut into it like this. I'm at a weird angle. Hold on a second. Let's see. Yeah, something like that. It's giving me this ambient occlusion. I just want to make him this like this derpy frog. And I think I'm gonna um let's see, where's my inflate brush? I just inflate it closed a little bit. I don't want to inflate it out into the cornea, I just want to inflate it closed. I was getting annoyed with my galaxy tab and nomad. You can't use your fingers when the pen is too close to the screen. Looks like that's not an issue. It's not an issue, no. Uh, yeah, Darren, I I really recommend using an iPad, not only because of that reason that you just explained, but there's other applications that are iPad only, like Cozy Blanket, which allows you to retopologize in on the on the iPad, and um, the uh, <laughs> are you talking about my hands? <laughs> Oh, funny. Like my, from my, like my bare hand. <laughs> yeah, Cozy Blanket is, is nice, but there's also, I don't know if Uncle Jesse's still here. He's the one who turned me on to this. Uh, there's this iPad um, app called Pick a Slice, and it allows you to slice your model for 3D printing. And by the looks of it, it's really, really good. And it's fast. It's like, Uncle Jesse was saying it's one of the fastest ones out there to to do the do the thing. So okay. So now that I have this, I want to fill the the eye with yellow. So I'm gonna go to this material. Now the material's in two different places. Oh yeah, yeah, Glenn. Glenn over at Southern Graphics. Yeah, Glenn, Glenn is actually a good friend of mine. He does he does an amazing job teaching nomad too so it's gonna it gives you a preview of what it's gonna look like and it has three properties you have uh, roughness um, so you can make it super shiny or dull and he, we're gonna cover this so it doesn't really matter but so I'm just gonna make it dull and then you can turn up and down metalness you can't really see it when it's not so here's you can make it look like metal like how it reflects everything and then you can change the color so those are the three parameters that you can do with the material here, but there's also different material types, like clear, I'll show you those in a second. Um, and then there's also alpha that you can do. Excuse me, geez. Okay, so I'm gonna click on, I kinda wanna make it like a yellow green. Like really bright, like this. And then you fill it. So you say paint all. And it fills it like this. It's kind of shiny. I don't want it that shiny. So I'm going to add some roughness to it. Are you doing this on a big iPad? Like 12 inches? Yes. Um, so I don't know if I can show you my setup on my screen. But you can see my phone. See how it moves. Woo! If I, if I kind of bring it up into my camera. Can you see that? Uh... Oh, it's flipping my camera around. What did I just do? Okay. <laughs> I don't know what I just did. What? Here. I gotta make my camera tilt. <laughs> I, mess I messed it up. <laughs> but I have this, it's a sketchboard. This is a big thing called a sketchboard. And then I have uh, my phone on a, on a, on a big, yeah, I did. <laughs> I how did I do, I did it with this 
um, with this telescoping rod thing that's holding my phone. But I messed it up. Hold on a second. There we go. Okay. I can't move it around. It flips my image everywhere. <laughs> okay. But that's what you're seeing is, is my phone. You can see it in my face right here. And it's like, it's filming down. <laughs> so you can see, I, I feel like I have to show my hands. And the reason I wanted to set this up is so I can take it places. Like I want to, I want to get out of my house. I want to untether and take this places and like sculpt. Like, where am I sculpting at now? You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. So I'm going to grab this paintbrush and then I'm going to change this to a uh, darker, darker color. It gives you a preview, but it's not filling it. So you can kind of see how dark it's going to be on the surface of your, of your object. So I'm going to go pretty dang dark and zoom in on here and then Maybe change my alpha out and then color it. So I, I was thinking about the price of entry on this um, because, you know, Blender is free, right? Yeah, where on earth is <laughs> Carmen Sh Shane Diego? <laughs> Okay, you know what, before I do that, before I do what I just did. Hey, Wilbur, how are you doing? Okay, before I do what I just did, you can also eye drop the color. See that little like preview sphere? It's like showing me the color. But I want to, I wanna make it more yellow. Or actually, I, sh I should have painted the dark Okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go from dark to light, like you would do, with uh, like with a, a, a like if you're painting a character in real life or whatever. So I'm gonna take this, go more green, darker, like this. Fill it, then go back to a light green. Okay, bigger brush, soft alpha this there we go that's what I want yeah that's fun and then do more of a yellow a little bit smaller maybe not so heavy go just came back home and I got a call to get something done last minute oh no worries I just thought I would stream for some weird reason <laughs> I just wanted to try my streaming setup to see if it actually worked and it's working so far okay And this is like a buildup. So the more you lay it down, the more it builds up. You can also adjust it with this um, right here. Okay. So derpy frog eyes. Okay, this is the cool part. So now I have these corneas that I duplicated, right? I'm going to grab this cornea. I just want the one. And then grab the gizmo. And I can center it so I can unlock the pivot and it gives me this center option and a, an alignment option. I can align it with the world and then I can lock it and then the outside ring is scale. So I can scale it up just a little bit and I need to show it. There we go. Okay. So right now it's just an opaque white uh, material, but what I can do is I can go in and go to this material right here. Um, 
and I can check refraction. Okay, so it's being refracted now. I can crank up the reflectance like crazy, and I can turn on paint glossy, and then I can adjust the refraction. Look at this. It's so wild. Yeah. And so the, it's like literally refracting the eyeball on the inside of the thing. And you can see like on the edge, it's actually refracting the, the skin into the eyeball itself. It's so, <laughs> so awesome. Anyway, yeah, super fun. So I'm going to actually grab this skin and it has, um, it has, uh, SSS on it. Hey, what's up, Ryan? How you doing, man? Thanks. Yeah, I just got it. I just got it up and going. I was, uh, I was going to talk to you today for some reason. I'm trying to remember. I'll have to, we'll have to chat after. Okay. So I'm going to go do, uh, back to like a frog green color with the rest of the frog. Maybe not so saturated. Maybe like this. There we go. And then maybe like, I love the preview because you can see exactly how glossy it's going to be. And I can paint all like this. Hey, what's up, Peter? How you doing, man? Everybody's showing up today. Yay. <laughs> okay. So, so now that I have this gloss, it's probably a little too glossy, but, um, yeah, aren't those eyeballs just the meat. So you, what I've done before is I'm, uh, I've built like a regular human eye and made it refract the eye and it looks so good and made it, you know, you make the cornea bulge and it's like, it bulges out and it's super cool. <laughs> Anyway, if you couldn't tell, I've been having a lot of fun with this. So um, I'm going to make it just a little bit rougher. Come on, you can do it. Because I want it, I want it slimy, but not that slimy. <laughs> okay. So another thing that Nomad has is uh, layers that that work really, really well. So on the top top right-hand side, you can see this layer. And this is the layer of the sphere. And yes, I, I want to put arms on, but I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, what am I trying to say? <laughs> I'm like purposefully not doing that. How's that? So I'm just going to add this layer and then I can color his belly the same way I colored his eyeballs. And actually I'm going to grab this. Oh, I'm grabbing the color off the cornea and that's not what I want. So I'm going to hide that cornea, grab the sphere, grab the eyedropper, and I just want to grab this color. It's being late in France, but the live is awesome. As a user of Nomad, it's cool to see this kind of live. Yay! Nice. Yeah, the developer of Nomad lives in, in France. Which is, if you didn't know that. Okay. So now I have this, go back to the paintbrush with this alpha. I'm going to pick a different alpha, a softer alpha. And then these are alphas I've loaded up, by the way. It, it, it only comes with those three alphas on the top, but I want to bring in a whole bunch of different ones. Um, let's see how this one works. Okay. Basically, I just want to give them a yellow belly. <laughs> Yeah, something like this. Okay, now to make these arms, um, I'm going to use that tube brush. The tube brush is so much fun. So you grab this path, and you just go, like, let's just start to make a path like this. And then it doesn't look like much until you hit go. Okay, and then... Now I can come in here and turn on snap and snap these dots to the surface. And then I can make it really fat like this and then turn his arm into his body. I'm going to turn off snap for just a second so I can push this one into his body. And then I can go up here and on tube and crank up 
uh, post subdiv like twice. Okay, now you can start to see how easy this is. <laughs> okay, it's just, it, it makes me smile. This tube brush makes me smile. Okay, and then let's kind of put it here, here, and now I can go into the radius twice. Nope, let's go back. I don't know why this is giving me, yeah, something like that is what I want. And then radius third time, and I can adjust each of these dots to be different sizes if I want to. So this is, at, at the current time, this is only a, a circle tube. But I've, I've heard word that we're going to get lofted profiles. The K9 packs on ArtStation, 600? Oh my gosh. Too many of my list, yeah, that's too much. <laughs> Any plans for a Nomad 3D character workshop course? Yes, Javier, that's my, that's my goal. That's, uh, that's what I want to do next. So if I, I hope people are interested in that, but I wanted to give people a little preview. And I wanted to test my live streaming to make sure it worked. Okay. Okay. So What's cool about this is I don't have to commit it. I, I, I want to because I want to sculpt on it, but I don't have to. Um, but I can grab this little, this little froggy body, froggy body, and then pull his butt down a little bit. Oh, it's got some. So you can, you can add material to any brush. Well, not any, but a lot of the brushes. So as you do the thing with the brush, it will also add color. So right now I'm, I have move selected, but the color is turned on. You can see with the little sphere down here, um, it's active. So as I move, it's actually given me some color <laughs> and I don't necessarily want that. So I'm just going to turn it off up here. So it, you know, it has that red slice through it. And now I'm back to moving without color. And I can eye drop the color off of the body so if I go back to the paintbrush, and it depends on all three. So I can have one or two or three, any of these perimeters selected, and I drop that perimeter. So say if I only wanted the roughness, and I wanted to apply that roughness to another part of my model, I could. But right now I just want all three. So I'm going to do this. Um, I'm going to do the, the eye drop method. Grab this arm, and and then just fill it. Well, I'm going to validate this first. Okay, and then just kind of paint it in. Um, change my alpha to no alpha. So I can just paint it. There we go. So now that I have these, these arms here, I don't know why it's got this slow build up here. Here we go. <laughs> this little guy, he just he's just chilling. I want to make his legs like hanging off the back, like he's just like climbing up. <laughs> <laughs> so okay um, and so now what I want to do is I can voxel remesh these guys so I'll hold this down again and you can see I can do it really quite low to start with so again I treat these like uh, pixels the pixel density but it's like dynamesh density um, hit remesh it will remesh this and I can solo it just like I can ZBrush and you can kind of see that it, it connected these things and then I can just hit smooth and start to smooth it out. I can revoxel it again, smooth it out. So, and I don't want to lose that crease entirely. I just didn't like how it was folding as much as it was. So I just wanted to smooth it out and then I'll, I'll redo the, um, I'll redo the cut through here with the crease brush. So I can just go whoop like that. And then I can also pinch it together. So yeah, crease will push down in, and crease will pull pull it together closer. And you kind of see the the surface here, and I can make it 
a little more dense now that I have that. Crank it up, remesh it, and then use smoothing. Just smooth it on down. How did you solo? Um, there's a solo button down at the bottom left. It looks like a little uh, magnifying glass right, right down here. That's how you do it. Okay. So now I can start to um, work, work his little fingers. <laughs> I'm not really looking at the concept as much as I'm just trying stuff out, but I'm I'm gonna grab this, let's solo this again, because it's like elephant arms now. Let me go, I'm gonna go back to before it was that dense. It's easier to work with when it's not as dense. There we go. Then I can move it much easier. Just like in ZBrush, you wanna have it low resolution as long as you can. Kind of, and I can either pull these fingers out or I can use the tube brush again, um, which I probably will. Just block it out with a tube brush, or I can do an insert multi mesh. But let's do a let's do a tube brush. I think it's because I have it solo; it's not doing it. Oh, I got to click on path. Okay, make it bigger. And move it and say I want it to kind of taper and then kind of come out at the end and go small again <laughs> okay val validate now what's interesting is since I um, Since I did that, while I ins like I tapped on the on the arm to insert it, um, it's underneath the mirror, so it automatically got mirrored, if that makes sense. And now I can I can actually clone this finger if I wanted to, but I can use the gizmo, move it around. And then duplicate it. So duplicate is, um, it's up here. See where it says clone? You hit clone, and then you can move it. This, you know, the it's kind of hard to grab the little circle on the inside. <laughs> I love Nomad. I wish it came out before I bought ZBrush in a graphic display. <laughs> yeah. I've been using it for months, Peter, and I didn't even know that solo button is there. I always hide each sub to. Oh, um, okay, let me show you something. If you can't see something, make sure you have it turned on. So um, go to this, this slider button, the options thing, and underneath interface, the, the, the top left one, and you can see add shortcuts to the bottom. And it's, make sure those, those things are all turned on. So um, like lock selection, perspective grid. Uh, I just don't, I don't turn on camera snapping and camera reset because you don't need to. They're up here on the top right. So you can click home right here and it sends it home. You can select, uh, go to selected. And this little sphere right here will snap the camera. So if you tap on the word front, it will snap it to the front. Also a, a hidden gem is you can click on the word front and slide up and down and it will lock it to that axis. So I can't, once I start rolling it, I can't roll left and right, which is really nice for when I need to trim off something super, you know, like at an angle. So anyway. Okay, I'm gonna just shrink this finger down. Um, do you use Nomad more than ZBrush now? I also have a graphics display, but still use ZBrush more than Nomad. It depends. I'm, I'm getting into Nomad more, and it's just because of the, 
the flexibility of it. Um, and it's, it's not like, yeah, just, it's just because I want to, I want to sit at my, on my couch with my family and watch a show or something while I sculpt, you know, and I could totally do that. Yep, exactly. Work-life situations. I mean, <laughs> so one of my students, uh, his name is John T. Quinn. I was just talking to him. He's been using Nomad a lot lately. And um, he, was, he sculpted a character, like a full character, while he was waiting for his tires to get changed at a tire shop. <laughs> that's just, <laughs> that's awesome to me. Okay, so to merge something together, I actually want to, duplicate this finger before I merge it, but so I'm just kind of lining these up. Okay. And I grab this gizmo, going to clone it. And it's, it's cool that you can click inside this, the rotation circle and it will actually give you, can you kind of see this? Um, it's, it's not, it's kind of hard to control, but it's, it's a pretty cool, like little globe thing you can mess around with, but, uh, I find it's, I can't control it good enough. Okay. What did I just do? So double two finger tap is undo. Oh, did I? <laughs> I was moving the wrong thing. Gosh dang it. Did I not clone it? Did I? I must have rolled back too far. Let's see. I like how the Shane Magic off his Pico. <laughs> yep. <laughs> stream this from from different places <laughs> like I live in Utah which is a crazy state for amazing places like they have uh, a lot of na national parks around here okay so I don't want those thumbs to touch there we go so now that I have all of these I can go and select them with the, with the box. So there's the arm, one finger, two fingers, three fingers, and the, so all four of those parts together. And then I hit this uh, simple join. See, it just says join right here with the two arrows together. And that joins them, and I, it's, it's still being mirrored because it's still underneath that mirror repeater. And <laughs> why does he look so sad? I know he's like, ooh, I need, I'll make him look happy here in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> but he's sad because his hands aren't joined together. <laughs> okay, so I can move, I can kind of move these around. I don't want those thumbs to be stuck together. And I'm going to move this log so he's actually grabbing it better. Um, but now what I can do with these hands is I can join everything together. So with a voxel remesh. So again, I can move this around so I can see everything that's going to be remeshed and at what resolution. So go pretty dense like this, hit remesh, and then now I can hit a brush that I can use smooth with and then smooth it out. Just like that. It's pretty stinking sweet if you ask me. It feels like the future. And it's being rendered, and I can put a light in here. I'm going to put a light in here. Okay, just so you guys can see it. Add light. See, all of a sudden it's got shadows and stuff now. This is a uh, sunlight. So if you look at the top, now we have all these options. You have sunlight, spotlight, 
point light. Um, you can change the color, the intensity, whether it casts shadows or not. Um, I'm just going to use a, sun, a sunlight for now. And this little green dot at the end of this arrow it will actually stick to your character, whatever you're aiming it at. So you can move this light away and then grab this green dot and stick it to your character like this. And then what you can do is get a good camera location. I can even turn on perspective. Get a good camera location and then you can uh, lock it to your camera. I'm trying to remember how to do that. Um, I might have to do it under here. Show painting. I can't remember where you do it. Anyway, you can lock it to the camera. So when you roll your camera around, it sticks to the camera rather than stick sticking into the scene. But um, I'm not finding it. Maybe it's here. New. If you guys can see it, let me know. Mm. Exposure, rotation, attached. So the, the environment is attached to the camera right now, but you can also attach the light itself. And I can't remember how to do it. Maybe it's up, no? Anyway, I can't remember how to do it, <laughs> but you can. Okay, so now I can make another light. And this the reason why I, I like to have it attached to the camera is because I can do like a, a light behind the, the guy. And again, you can grab that green dot and move it and point it right at the back of him. So let me move this over here. Okay. You can have the pivot point to make it more manageable. Javier, what are you saying? You can what? You can something the pivot point? Well, I don't know what that, oh, change? You can change the pivot point? Let's see. So, so when it's looking at the back like this, I want to show you the, the, you can mess with the, um, material and I can make this a subsurface material and now I can turn up the depth of it. Let's turn down the environment lights. And this guy might be too thick. <laughs> it works best with if there's thin ears or something like that. But let me grab the lights. Hey, John. Late to the party. Oh, no worries. <laughs> I'm just I'm just kind of fooling around. Nothing, uh, no big deal. Okay. I just want to mess with this uh, material here. Because you can, you can really adjust yeah, the reflectance and the depth and make it look really waxy. It's not really working very well because of the, um, because it's too thick. <laughs> but let me try it with this. Subsurface depth. There it goes. So you can kind of barely see the pink coming up from underneath the log right over here. See the red coming up in there? But I don't like the environment being that dark, so I'm going to crank it back up a little bit. There we go. And I can grab this log, make it a little thicker. See, I didn't validate it, so I can still move it. And I can fill it with like a, a brown. And I can turn up the post subdivs one more that and then validate it that's pretty good and then I can go in here and uh, like with my crease brush make it smaller and just like do some cuts and things in there um, to make it look look more like wood <laughs> like a stick um, so let's do a brown material maybe like 
like this. Yeah, you can also click on the sphere and access a bunch of materials in here. Make it darker. There we go. I like that. And subtract is, you can see it says, there's like over here, it says sub. Um, and with the Apple Pencil, hey, I can get up in my camera and show you. With my Apple Pencil, I actually have this cover on it that makes it look like an HB Pencil. <laughs> I thought it was kind of funny. Um, but basically, I can, I can double click on this and change it to sub. Did you see the sub change? See, now it's not sub, sub, not sub, sub. And then, um, so now I can make these kind of come out instead of go in and turn down the intensity a little bit. Let me turn on solo. And just kind of subtract, yeah, too big. Too big. Um, hey Judy, yes, Nomad Sculpt is is on iPad. It's on Android too, but I recommend iPad, particularly an iPad Pro, and even better an iPad Pro M2 because it has hover. This one is a pre. This is a pre M2. This is pre M chips. This is before those came out. any of these. I'm going to get rid of that and re redo the redo the material. Okay, another thing I can do is add a layer and then go ham on it. And let's try a different alpha, maybe this one. That's better. Hmm. I liked it all the way until I crossed streams. There we go. Just enough to make it have some texture. Okay. Not too crazy. <laughs> Okay, let's work on that mouth, Josh, shall we? <laughs> Make him not so not so frowny. Okay, I think it's still mirrored. Yeah. So there's there's several different ways to mirror stuff in here. Um, right now it has symmetry turned on. You can see the sim S Y M down here, um, and it also. If it's it, this one is not under an instance mirror, so it's not gonna it's not gonna do that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm gonna grab that crease again, and I'm gonna turn off the uh, paint and turn off the alpha. You can attach to the camera from three dots in the edit tab on the right of the light bar. All right, let's check this out really quick. So, what are you talking about? <laughs> Let's see. Three dots in the edit tab. The edit tab? I don't know what you're talking about. Sorry. Pencil on the, oh, the pencil on the light itself. Like these three dots right here. Okay. Clone, recenter, delete. Oh, fixed right here. Attachment, camera, duh. That's right. Thank you very much. Okay. There it is. There it is. There it is. I knew I had seen it before. So camera. That way when I rotate this, yeah, it rolls around with the character instead of, 
in the scene. Thank you. Okay. So let's make this look more like the the concept here. Pull. Whoops. No paint. No paint. Give him a fatter, a fatter face. And I really, really love that I can I can hover my left hand over my brush size and the intensity while I'm sculpting on, on it with my right hand. Makes it pretty nice, pretty easy access. And I can also rotate with my right hand too. Be happy now. You wait. Okay, let's see. That's a little not dense enough. So let's voxel this more. Okay. Smooth it. Crease it. I'm gonna do a pinch on it a little better. This pinch is really subtle, I like it. Mm. Let's try that one more time with a lower intensity. And it does have a like a, what is it called, the, the mouse stabilization in the brush itself, which you can adjust, and you can adjust the fall-offs. Like if I wanted it to pinch even m more like this, I could, or even more. It'd be even sharper. It's just a matter of selecting the fall-off. So, oh, I'm getting a dinner call. I better go eat, you guys. Grab. Just closing this up a little bit, making him smiley frog. <laughs> there we go. He's like, hi guys. <laughs> yeah, I want to. I want to go and uh, smooth out his upper lip, but yeah. Um, one more thing I want to do is um, grab this brush. Just the brush brush and change the stroke type. I've already set this up, but you can choose an alpha and change the stroke type to lock intensity. And I want to change the color to this yellow color. And then based on the size of my brush, I can click and drag and make these dots. And I can put them on a layer. I think it's on a layer right now, yeah. Here, I can make a new layer. New layer, okay. Yay, little dots. <laughs> Frogdots.com. Put them on his arms. New layer. So it looks like, yeah, these arms, they were dense enough, but I could smooth them out a little bit more. Okay. And the smooth, it's, so the layers will also hold that, that, uh, that kind of density or the, the sculpting information as well as color information. Like little warts. 
Has anyone tried it on first gen iPad Pro? This is on a third gen, I think. I want to say third gen. <laughs> there you go. Little lumpy frog. Let me turn off symmetry for a second. Okay, and what I really love about Nomad Sculpt is you can click up here and click on turntable and it just starts to spin it. He has no legs. <laughs> Didn't get didn't get that far, but uh, I can zoom in and zoom out while it's spinning, and I I think you can make a GIF from this, like a, a little movie, whatever you want to do. But anyway, there you go, guys. My first little Nomad demo. Thanks for hanging out. How many people are watching now? By the way, I'm just curious. But I gotta go. I gotta go eat. So thanks everybody for hanging out. I learned everything about ZBrush and 3D sculpting from you. Oh, thanks so much. I'm glad you could make my Nomad live stream. 29 was it? It was at 38. Oh, not, not bad, not bad. All right, you guys. Well, have a wonderful rest of your day and uh, I will see you next time. All right, thanks everybody. Have a good day. We'll see ya. Bye.